In Excel, one of the problems is things like this. We've got an error message. Now, the way Excel works is if you have an error message, and for example, over here, I've built an average function. Because of this error message, Excel doesn't know what to do with the numbers, so it shows it as an error. But occasionally, what this means is it's actually a legitimate error. This is dividing this number by zero. That's mathematically not possible. As a result, we actually want to replace it. So there are two functions in Excel that allow for that. The newer one called if error, and an older one but still useful called is error. The if error is very simple. Let's find it. And all it asks for is where's the value. So I'm going to point over here. And what must happen if it's an error? So note you don't have an option for if it's not an error. The assumption is you just want to see that number again. If it's not an error, oh, sorry, if it is an error, I want it to be a zero. So you'll see that shows the exact same number. But when I copy it down, this one looks here, sees an error message, and replaces it with whatever we've used. If we don't want to use a zero or a number, I could go and put a text in, and in this case, I'm just going to put a dash. So that now, when I copy and paste it, wherever there's an error message, we see the dash. The major benefit of if error is that it's very easy to build over other formulas. So in this case, we used a separate column, but perhaps we want to go and correct it here. So we don't want to have a column and then have to correct it in another column. So you'll see this has got a formula and all it's doing, it's dividing one column by another column. And that's why this division by zero error. Our suggestion, build the formula, look at it, copy it down, check the errors and make sure that it is a genuine acceptable error and not an error from your part. And when you've done all of that, you can add the if error around it. And the way to do it is you go just after the equal sign and you type your if error open bracket. And then you go right to the end. So this could be a VLOOKUP or if anything. You go right to the end and you put comma. And in this case, I'm going to do a zero. And when I click enter, you'll see I've now got that. And let's paste this as formulas. So you'll see instead of now building it separately, it's now part of the formula. So that's quite a useful one. I'm just going to undo it just so we can show you about how is error works. So if error is fairly new, it's not hasn't always been available. What has always been available is the is error function, and it's still available, and it still is useful. So the way is error works, let's go find it. And you'll see there's a couple of options. There's an is error, is error. So just read here to see whether it suits your needs. I'm going to use is error. And all it says is point at the value. So I'm going to click over there. The end result of is error is a true or false. So this is only saying, yes, there's an error here. So before if error came along, in order to achieve the same thing, you would typically have then had to build an if function, either in that same cell or like we're doing here separately. So I'm going to say, is that cell equal to true? If it is, then put our zero. If it's not, then just put whatever's in there. So prior to pre this version of Excel, what you would have needed to do is to build one of these and one of these, and you could have combined it. This is therefore a new formula that makes it a lot easier. But this does have a major benefit. And the benefit is you can actually tell it if it's not an error, so if these things say false, what should it do? So perhaps here, instead of saying zero and then the number itself, maybe we should have the word, this is an error. And if it's not an error, we want to see this is not an error. So for using an if error, you've only been able to achieve this. 
this is an error you could have replaced it over there so the is error is very useful where you've got to have different things for the true and for the false while we are here we're just going to touch on an, something called an aggregate function so what this one does is it takes into account some of the stuff we're doing here so here we basically creating calculations that we can then lead to another calculation the aggregate function allows you to do that now normally I'd use the function wizard but for functions like these it's quite useful to see the drop down so I'm going to go to aggregate and you'll see the first drop down says what is the function so we're going to try and mimic this average change here so I'm going to say choose a one and click on it and put the comma now this is the power of the aggregate function you can now control how it should handle errors so if you did a sum or an average an error just causes a problem in your formula but here you can see there's a whole bunch of options so if you look here first ignore the error values ignore hidden rows ignore nothing ignore hidden rows and error values and there's various combinations including the subtotal and the aggregate function so in this case I'm going to say ignore error values click tab tell it where to look so for now we'll just replicate it over here when I click enter what it's doing is ignoring this division by zero error and going straight into the calculation so it's just a slightly quick way than doing this we still recommend using these where possible because it's quite nice to be able to see where the error is because it may be a legitimate mathematical error or it could be just a mistake you've made.